But the most powerful story I find in Afghanistan is not on the eastern border, but in the capital city of Kabul. A story which highlights the burdens of being female in a nation where the blue burqa became a global symbol of repression. It's here I meet a 12-year-old girl named Gulsoma, who had for six years endured what most people could never imagine. But her resilient spirit made me believe some people can overcome almost anything. The story that had the greatest impact of all of our coverage uh, throughout the year was the story of Gulsoma, a child bride, a young girl that experienced such horrible treatment in so many ways. Um, basically, her father died and her mother remarried, and the stepfather didn't want her. So she was actually, at age six, given away to a family uh, as a promised bride to one of their sons. Now, it wasn't a marriage that was going to be consummated, obviously, with this child. She essentially was given to the family as a slave. When she was living there, and her father-in-law made her do horrendous things, not just like a Cinderella story where, you know, you're cooking and cleaning and things like that. She was forced to sleep outdoors. She was uh, forced to, to do all of the housework. And when she couldn't keep up with, with the workload of taking care of this family, even though she was just a child, a six-year-old child, they beat her. The father-in-law uh, was, was the worst of, of all the perpetrators. And they even, at times, made a table out of her, putting their food on top of her back and cutting meat on her back using sharp knives and forks. The one thing that her father-in-law didn't let the family do was that they didn't, he didn't let them do anything to her face. He didn't want you know, any evidence of this abuse to be seen. The end of her ordeal came when she was 11 years old. Her father-in-law accused her of stealing a watch. He broke her arm, beat her unconscious, then revived her with a pot of scalding water dumped over her head. She realized that if she was going to survive, she was going to have to escape. And so that's what she did. She crawled away in the middle of the night, and someone found her and took her away to the police. And the police found out what had been happening at the house, and so they arrested the father-in-law. When she finally recovered, she came to live in this orphanage in Kabul. <laughs> Today, her life is much different than how it began. She can study, play, and talk with her friends. She's no longer a servant, but still waits to eat after serving the other children. Despite her suffering, she's full of laughter, her smile evolving from that of a child into a young woman. But the suffering she experienced can never be completely left behind, mentally or physically. Her face, the only part of her body not beaten, still reveals the pain of her past. As she unveils her dozens of scars to the camera, she smiles through the memories, smiles through the shock on my face, trying to comfort me in a way that lets me know everything is going to be all right. In that moment, she becomes the symbol of the journey for me. The world is indeed full of pain and suffering, and the amazing human beings like Osoma who triumph over it every day.